Welcome to another edition of Intentional Conversations. On Intentional Conversations, we seek to interview leaders in men's ministry to help men grow spiritually, to help leaders and pastors reach men in today's culture discussing issues men face daily. It is a program where a men's ministry leader interviews leaders in men's ministry. Hey men, this is Mike Salen of K for Your Men. Well, this episode, I do not have a guest with me. Instead, I want to share some thoughts about the battle men face every day. But before I get started, I want to ask you to do me a favor. Please leave a comment about these podcasts. It helps me to determine who is listening and the types of programs you are looking for so we can invite the guests that will hopefully provide the information you are looking. And I thank you for doing that. But now let me share with you about the battle. There's a battle that's raging all around us. It's a battle we do not see, but it is real. It is a battle that will affect our children, our families, and our churches. It is a battle that sets the culture and character of our communities. What is that battle? The battle is for men's souls. Look around you. I want you to look around you, and, and, and you will find men struggling every day. Men put on a great face, and everyone in church thinks they are doing well. But statistics tell us a different story. Ten years ago in the book, No Man Left Behind, actually it was longer than 10 years ago. It was probably closer to 15 years now. The authors of the book, No Man Left Behind, stated that for every 10 men, nine will have kids who will leave the church. I think every one of us could can attest that we know somebody whose kids have left the church. Maybe not all of them, but at least one or two. Eight will find their jobs dissatisfying. And I was one of those men for many years who did not enjoy doing the work I was doing. Six will pay the monthly minimum on the credit cards. And I will tell you, for personal experience, until my wife and I attended a fall festival of marriage with a thing called for love or money, my financial situation was out of control. Five have a major problem with pornography. Chuck Swindoll calls this the number one most secret sin in our churches today. And a recent study indicates this could be as high as seven out of 10 today. Four will get divorced, affecting one million children each year. And I suspect that this is probably as high as five out of 10 today, if it's not higher. And the sad thing is that only one in 10 men will have a biblical worldview and all 10 will struggle to balance family and work. Men in church are struggling just like the men of the world. Why is it that when the Bible clearly teaches we are to be a reflection of Jesus to the world, Paul wrote to the Ephesians, we are to be imitators of God, in Ephesians 5.1. He was so confident in his walk with Christ that he told the people of Corinth to be imitators of me as I am in Christ, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. This man problem has become a crisis that is out of control. We have this incredible problem because Satan himself has said, win the man, you win the family. Scriptures do not actually say this, but it's true. I have a friend now in ministry who, who, who kind of reverses that, and he says this, when a man gets it, everyone wins. Satan's purpose is to steal and to kill and destroy, according to John 10.10. 10. And we see this as he has taken men hostage. They have done all the things they should not do. We have created a culture that encourages men to exchange the truth of God for lies and the glory of God for idols. And here's the bottom line. The inescapable conclusion is men have become one of the largest neglected people groups in our nation. Even in our churches, there's a battle raging in the church among us. Men having an opponent. He is a terrorist. And he wants to he wants the men of the church because Satan knows if he wins them, he can throw our family into so much turmoil. It will keep us from doing the things of God. And here's the big idea you need to take away. Anything less than a plan to disciple every willing man in your church is a moral failure. 
Men need to understand there is strength in Christ. There is hope in Christ. There is another chance in Christ. There is grace in Christ. It is the only hope of this world. Men having an intimate and intentional relationship with Jesus is the only hope that a man has to win the battle for his soul. So what do we need to do? As leaders, it is time to give attention to Paul's words in Thessalonians. In fact, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8, he makes this statement. He said, being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The key is to share our own selves, our own lives, to pour our lives into others. It is time for men to take Nehemiah's advice when he was encouraging his men while they were rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. The kings of the surrounding area were making noises about stopping them from doing what God had called them to do, much like what the world is doing around us today. But Nehemiah told his men, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord is great and awesome. And fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. You'll find that statement in, in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14. But to do this, we need to be training ourselves in the word of God. We need to be discipling each other. Churches are beginning to understand the importance to disciple men. We are hearing churches talk about more about discipling today than ever before in the history of the church, at least in the history of my lifetime. There are men throughout this, the, this area that I live in that are meeting regularly in small groups or discipling relationships each week. And if you're not in a group like that, I want to encourage you to do that, to get a group of men together and begin to meet together. If you need help with that, you can reach out to me and I'll be glad to help you develop some kind of strategy to pull men together into a discipling group. If we want this culture to change, then we need to start changing within ourselves. We need to ch start changing our attitude about speaking in each other's lives. Men need other men in their lives and not men who just go to ball games together or go hunting together or go fishing together. Men need men who will speak into each other's lives, as Paul was talking about to the Thessalonians. We need men who will pray for us. We need men who can be our confidant. We need men who will be available to us at 3 a.m. in the morning when we need someone to talk to. We need men who will hold us to our walk with Christ. As men's leaders, those of us who are men's leaders, we need to encourage men of our churches to meet together regularly to study God's word, to pray together, to encourage one another. Sometimes these meeting places don't have to be in the church. They could be at a person's place of business. Could be in a restaurant. Could be in a garage. I know a man who, who meet with several men early in the morning in, the, in his garage at his home. And it could actually be in your home. And more importantly, more and more men need to begin to meet for this purpose. We will begin to see the culture of our men change. We'll begin to see our men become men who will be watchful, standing firm in the faith, act like men, and be strong. So I want to encourage you to help us in this battle for men's souls by, by getting a group of guys together sitting down and working through the word of God. And if you need help with that, you can reach out to me and I'll be glad to help you do that. Just, just email me at mike.sandlin at capefearmen.net. Tell me that you heard this progress and you want to know more about the cycling men. And I will be glad to provide information to you. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed hearing some of my thoughts about battle of men are in every day, this battle for men's souls. And I thank you for listening to the Intentional Conversations from Mike Stanley, as Intentional Conversations is a production of Take Fear Men, a men's ministry coalition. And check out our website. The Iron Sharpens Iron Conferences are coming up uh, here in the North Carolina area next spring. 
and you can hear the and those are up on the website now so you can get start getting more information about it and start planning that saving those dates but please please leave a comment about this program it helps us it helps me to develop more program to, to meet your needs what you're looking for to help you as men to fight this battle for men's soul but in closing i'd like to ask you to do two things share this program with a friend and Consider helping us to keep these broadcasts coming to you by becoming a financial partner to Cape Fear Men. You can give by going to capefearmen.net. You can click on the, on the Give button at the top of the page, and that will help us help us out tremendously if you would really do that. And I thank you in advance for that. Cape Fear Men is a 501c3 organization operating under Ministry of Lies. And to learn more about Cape Fear Men and how Cape Fear Men can help you reach the men of your church, or if you want to know more about what we discuss on these programs, go to capefearmen.net. And if you'd like to speak to me directly, email me at mike.sandlin at capefearmen.net. But for now, I will leave you with this blessing. I pray that God will give you a rock to stand on, a brook to drink from, and a tree to shade you. Once again, this is Mike Sandlin saying God bless. And I hope you will join me again on the next Intentional Conversation with Mike Sandler.